two. Fighting for fulfillment, part two. Father, we ask that you speak to us today. Do something special in our lives today. Let today be a day of impact in the name of Jesus. But I thank you for allowing us to see the second month of the year. What a blessing. Thank you for allowing us to see this great day. Let your name be glorified in our life today. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. God told us this is a year of vision and fulfillment. This is a very special year. The plan of God for you this year, you have never seen it before. There is nothing great that you have experienced in the past year that will be compared to this year for you. I say every great thing you have experienced in the past year shall be nothing compared to this year for you. God is going to elevate you this year. God is going to lift you up this year. God is going to raise you up this year. God is going to promote you this year. God is going to put you on a new level this year. Tell somebody, God is putting me on a new level this year in the name of Jesus. It's our year of vision and fulfillment. God has a plan to show you something awesome about your life this year. It's a year of vision. The year that you will see, you will understand, you will comprehend, you will be well defined. The year that God will show you that which he has put up, stored up for you, you will see the plan of God for your life. I've already received so many testimonies from different people this year already. Very soon I shall receive your own testimony. I say very soon I will be hearing your own testimony. Very soon everybody in this church will be hearing your own testimony. As God begins to distribute testimony, you shall not be left out. I say you shall not be left out. I say you shall not be left out. Somebody shout a loud Amen. As God gives us his word for the year, it's important you understand something. Open your Bible to Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse 24. Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse 24. The Bible says, rise ye up, take your journey, and pass over to the river Anon. Behold, I have given into your hand or have given into thy hand Sion, the Amorite, king of Ishbon, and his land begin to possess it. God says, I've given you the land. I've given you this territory. I've given you the blessing. I've given you the word for the year. This is your year of vision. This year that God is going to destroy every form of spiritual blindness. This is the year that confusion will not have any hold upon your life. He says, I have given you the land. The miracle, the testimony is clear. He said, but you have to do something. You have to go and begin to possess it. And, says, and, and, and the Bible says, and contend with him in battle. This is a very, very critical scripture in the Bible. God says, I've given you the land. I've blessed you. I've called you. I have an incredible plan for you. So, but it is important to begin to possess it. It's important for you to begin to take the land. And taking the land is not going to be a cakewalk. Taking the land requires you to fight. Somebody say fight. Somebody shout fight. To take the land will require you to battle. You know, there are many people that want to live in the fight-free zone. Battle free zone. God has said it, and that is it. 
It's important for you to understand that it is God that is saying you have to fight for what he has given you. How many of you know that many times you have to fight for your right in this country? We talk about civil right and human right and this right and that right. Right is something that is yours, but you don't have. Right is something that is yours that somebody is trying to deprive you of. So it's important for you to understand that what God has promised you still requires your battle to possess. See, this is your year of vision. This is your year of fulfillment. But you have to fight. Because in every promised land, there is a giant. Do you understand that when the children of Israel go to the promised land, they have to fight? They have to confront the wall of Jericho. They have to obey God, follow the word of God. They have to listen to his specific instructions and direction. What God has given you, you have to fight for. In fact, what you fight for is what he has given you. What he has not given you, you are wasting your time fighting for it. What you fight for is what he has given you. God requires you to fight for fulfillment this year. To take that word that he has given you and say, the Lord promised me vision and fulfillment. The Lord promised me plan and purpose. The Lord promised me intervention and breakthrough. What God has promised me, I receive, I take, I possess. There is nothing that will be given unto you except what you contend for. He says, and I have given you the land. I have given into your hand, king of Amorite, king of Eshbon. Begin to possess it. You see that word? Begin. It's a process. It's a process. Begin to possess it. Start. It's a process. Nothing that you process it. As you process it, it involves you contending. It involves, it involves contention with him in battle. Even though I've given him to you to serve you, but it's going to resist. The Bible says, submit yourself unto God. Resist the devil. Submit yourself unto God, and then resist the devil. Why do you think when you are in the military, they have to take you to boot camp? They take you to boot camp to turn you to a zombie. You know, I was talking with Anthony. We had a day together this week, and he was telling me what they took him through. He was telling me that the drill sergeant was calling him a girl. I know Anthony is pretty, but it's not a girl. You understand what I'm saying? You know, they, 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 the first thing they do when you go to the military is to first scrape your hair. Why do you think they do that? Guess, why do you think they do that? Just guess, okay. Why? Break you down. They try to humiliate you. They try to turn you to a yo-yo. They try to tell you you are nobody. Because as long as you are somebody, you cannot be what they want you to be. They have to break you down and then begin to rebuild you. They have to tear you down to reset you to the image that they want you to conform to. They want to break you down to the extent that when they say move, you move. Come, you come. Go, you go. Sleep, you sleep. Shut up, you shut up. Eat, you eat. Stop, you stop. Dress, you dress. Don't dress, you don't dress. Shoot, you shoot. They tell you, Obey before complain. Or obey and don't ever complain. They have to submit you, make you to submit in order for you to resist the enemy. By the time they are done with you, there is no enemy that can withstand you. They are breaking you down to submission so that you can able to effectively resist the enemy. They teach you how to shoot. They teach you how to run. They teach you how to walk. They teach you how to dress. They teach you how to talk. They teach you how to look. They teach you how to act. They change all things that you know about yourself. They redefine you. You will never be able 
to take the land if you don't understand the process, the process of submission. So the Bible says, submit yourself unto God. And now you can resist the devil. And the devil, we have no choice but to, but to flee from you. The devil just don't respond to anybody. He responds to those that are submitted to God. So taking the land requires you going through a process. It's begin to process it. Begin to possess it. So I've given you the land, but you have to go through a process to possess it. You have to fight. Many believers don't want to fight. Many believers, when we are confronted with battle, we blame God. If God loves me, why would you allow this to happen to me? Lord, if you love me, why would you allow this to happen? Why would you allow that to happen? And God is saying, I love you. I want you to fight. God is saying this year is your year of vision, but you have to fight. There are steps you have to take in order for you to possess his plan, to fulfill his agenda for your life. There are things God wants you to do in order for you to be fulfilled this year. You know, God is not Santa Claus. In Africa, we call him Father Christmas. Santa Claus. You know, an old man with a long beard, Red and white heart, big belly. They'll sit down and then, what do you want? Gives it to you. Santa Claus is a fantasy. It's an exciting fantasy. But it's a fantasy. For every blessing that God gives you, it gives you a requirement. It gives you a condition. If God has told you you are going to be a medical doctor, you can't say, well, I'm going to be a medical doctor, but I won't go to school. Because why? God said it. I believe it. God said to me. Really? Seriously? God said it. I believe it. Now go to school. <laughs> right? If God says, you see a giant revelation and an angel show up to you and say, you are a doctor. You know what he's also telling you? Go to college. Take education seriously. Do your own work. Complete your projects. Show up in school. Read for the exam. Pass with flying colors so that I can go to a medical school. I mean, you have to go to high school, you have to go to college, and you have to study and study. So by God telling you that you are a medical doctor, God is saying you have a lot of studying to do. When God says this is your year of vision and fulfillment, God is saying, I've set you up for greatness this year. I've set you up for joy this year. I've set you up for happiness this year. This year will be like no other year, but you have some things you have to do. You have to fight. I've engraced you. I've given you grace for this year to see clearly and to be fulfilled this year. As long as you are willing to do what he has called you to do. So God told the children of Israel, I've given you Sion, the Amorite. I've given you the king of Eshbon. And I've also given you his land. It says, begin to possess it and contend with him in battle. Look at what he says in verse 25. This day will I begin to put the dread of thee and the fear of thee upon the nations that are under the whole heaven. Who shall hear report of thee, and shall tremble and be in anguish because of you. He said, I'm going to give you everything you need to possess the land. I'm going to give you everything you need to see clearly the vision, the plan, the assignment. I'm going to give you everything you need to fulfill what I've shown you. But you have to do it. If you look at 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 18 and 19, 
First Timothy chapter 1, verse 18 and 19 says, This charge I commit unto you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou by them might war a good war. I want you to pay attention to this. If you see, if you notice something, I'm preaching very slowly today. It's because I want you to get it. Tell somebody, get it. Ask somebody, are you getting it? Tell somebody, are you understanding what he's saying? Tell somebody, I hope his accent is not an issue. <laughs> Hallelujah. Look at what he says. He says, this child I commit unto you, son Timothy. Paul was speaking to his spiritual son. And he said, I'm charging you. I'm giving you a charge. How? Based on what? Based on the prophecies which went before on thee. I'm standing here as your pastor this morning. I'm standing here as your spiritual father this morning. No physical father. Many of you are older than me. No financial father. Many of you are richer than me. But spiritual. He says, look, according to the prophecies which went before the... That's what I'm doing this morning. I'm charging you this morning according to the prophecy that has gone forth over your life. Don't let this year go to waste. He says, the prophecy that I've gone over you, because of you, on you, for you, to you. He says, I want you to follow this instruction based on that prophecy. He says, that thou might as fight. War a good warfare. In other words, the prophecy that came to you, January 1, is a weapon. It's like a sword. It's like a gun. You take that weapon and you fight. You stand on your feet. You say, God, this year is my year of vision and fulfillment. So anything that will make my vision blurry, everything that will hinder my sight, I destroy in the name of Jesus. According to your word, I am fulfilled this year in the name of Jesus. Anything that will hinder your fulfillment, we destroy right now in the name of Jesus. You take the word which you have heard and you turn it into a weapon and you fight with it. Because the enemy does not fight except there's, not, there's something worth fighting for. If there is something precious in your hand, the devil will contend with you. The land that God has given you, you have to fight to take it. That is why at the beginning of the year we started with fasting. Every Monday we fast and we pray. That's why we give you the word. That is why we ask uh, Reverend Baker to read the word of prophecy for you this year. To remind you what your right is. So that you don't forget. Because you having a gun in your pocket full of bullet, bullet, and the enemy shows up and you forgot that you have the gun and bullet in your pocket. How good is a forgotten gun? Is somebody listening to me? How good is a forgotten gun? I mean, you have the old star, you have the gun, you look like a cowboy, you look all nice and cute. And the, the, the enemy shows up, he started running. Now, the enemy showed up with a broomstick. Oh my goodness, and he started running, and there is gun in yo. What do you have the gun for? Why will you run this year when you have a weapon in your hand? Why will you run this year when God has said this is your year of fulfillment and vision? Why would you allow this year to be nothing? Why would you not take this year in your hand and say this is my year? And say I'm winning this year. I'm triumphing this year. I'm not running this year. That what used to pursue me, I am pursuing this year. 
I'm able to do exceeding abundantly above all I can ever ask or think this year. You take the word of prophecy and turn it into a weapon. You turn to a fighting tool. He said, this charge I commit unto you, son Timothy, according to the prophecy which went before on thee, that thou by them might as war a good warfare, holding faith and a good conscience, which some, having put away concerning faith, have made shipwreck. If you have a gun in your hand with bullet or you have a sword and the enemy shows up and you ignore it, you put it away, and you begin to run, you do not apply it in faith, then you make a shipwreck. God has assigned you blessings this year. God has assigned you breakthrough this year. And the Bible says, God cannot lie. You have to stop living naturally. You have to stop Thinking naturally. You have to expect the unthinkable to happen to you this year. You have to open your mouth and declare the plan of God. The Bible says, let the redeem of the Lord say. Let the redeem of the Lord say. Let the redeem of the Lord say. Let the redeem of the Lord say so. Taking the word of God and fighting with it. Refusing to quit, refusing to give up, refusing to back down, refusing to stand when you are supposed to just fight. Because the Bible says for every time there is a season, there is a moment when you stand. There is a moment when you have to launch forward. There is a moment when you have to take a step of faith. There is a moment when you have to Defend your ground. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Bible says the Lord will raise a standard against them. Your mouth is the launching pad to your greatness. You take the word of God in your mouth. This book of the Lord shall not depart out of your mouth. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. You shall study day and night. You shall meditate on it day and night. You shall observe to do according to what is written there. The then you make your way prosperous and have good success. The Bible says something in Luke chapter 21 verse 15. It says, for I will give you a mouth. I will give you what? I will give you what? Okay. Let me ask a question. Has God fulfilled that promise? Okay, let's try that again. God said, I will give you what? Is there anybody with a mouth here? Okay, some of you don't know you have a mouth. Look under your nose. That stuff that opens is called mouth. I will give you what? I will give you what? I will give you a mouth and what? And look at what it says. Which all your what? Adversaries shall not be able to what? No. Resist. So I will give you a mount which all your adversary shall not be able to gainsay and they shall not be able to resist. I want to remind you today that a closed mount is a closed destiny. How do you take the word of God to fight? I'm going to give you a few ways. The first way is to take that word and put it in your mouth. It means you declare it, you confess it, you prophesy it, you announce it, you claim it, you call it your own, you personalize it. I am blessed. I am blessed. I am the head and not the tail. I learn to nation, I do not borrow. I can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all I can ever ask or think. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Every tongue that rises against me in judgment is condemned. God has given me power to tread over serpent and scorpion and all the powers of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means hurt me. 
I shall decree things, it shall be established. And light shall be shown upon my way. I am healthy. Surely borne my grief, he carried my sorrow. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. He was wounded for my transgression and bruised for my iniquity. The chastisement of my peace has been laid upon him by his strap, I am healed. I shall not suffer affliction for the second time. Is somebody listening to me? He suffered men not to wrong me. He reproved kings for my sake. Saying, touch no man, not there do my prophet no harm. Is my strength, is my confidence. God is my refuge. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am strong. I am not weak. I am rich. I am not poor. I am healthy. I am not sick. Everybody loves me. Nobody hates me. Because Bible says, when your way pleases the Lord, it shall make even your enemy to be at peace with you. Men and women are going out of their way to favor me. They don't even know why they just favor me. They can't explain it, they just favor me. They can't stand me, but they still favor me. They don't understand it, but they still favor me. I'm highly favored. This is my year of vision. This is my year of fulfillment. A thousand can fall by my side. 10,000 by my right hand side, he shall not come near me. For the Lord is with me. He shall give his angel the charge over me to keep me in all my ways, lest I strike my foot against a stone. This, food, this book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth. This is my year of vision. This is my year of fulfillment. This is my year of intervention. I shall experience happiness this year because of fulfillment. Things that has taken so long to fulfill in the past are happening for me this year. There is grace for me this year to fulfill. There is grace for me this year to succeed. There is grace for me this year to be happy, to receive that which I'm believing God for. You take the word of God and you believe it and you confess it and you speak it. In the face of contrary circumstance, in the face of contrary situation, you still declare the works of God. You still declare the words of God. You do not allow your environment to determine your utterance. You allow your utterance to determine your environment. You remember that you are the salt of the earth. And when the salt shows up, it changes its environment. You are the light of the world. And when the light shows up, it destroys darkness. So when you show up, you show up based on the word that God has given you. The color of your skin will not matter. Your height, your size will not matter. Your education level will not matter. You take the word of God by faith. You speak it and speak it and speak it. And speak it. They make fun of you, you speak it. They laugh at you, you speak it. They complain about you, you speak it. Your mind tells you to shut up. You tell your mind to shut up and you still speak it. How many of you know that sometimes you need to talk to yourself? Is anybody here that talk to themselves? If you don't talk to yourself, something is wrong with you. Tell somebody, talk to yourself. Talk, 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 talk. Talk to yourself. Talk to yourself. Talk to yourself. Didn't you hear David that says, why are you disquieted, oh my soul? He's talking to himself. So let the weak say, I am strong. Many of you talk to everybody except yourself. Some of your greatest problem is you. Some of you have been asking God to show you your enemy. Go and look at the mirror. You are the one. Good preaching, Pastor. I'm going to buy this CD myself. Oh, you know, it's free now. It's free. It's free now. It's free now. Talk to yourself. Tell somebody, talk to yourself. 
You talk yourself out of depression. You talk yourself out of sickness. You talk yourself out of poverty. You talk yourself out of sorrow. You talk yourself out of pressure and strength. You talk to yourself. You tell yourself, it is well. 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 Everything is good. Nothing is missing. Nothing is broken. I'm blessed. Why? The word of God says, I am blessed. Hallelujah. Highly favored. You talk to yourself. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 20. Proverbs 18, 20. And a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. You are going to be satisfied with the fruit of your own mouth. It doesn't matter what they call you. What is important is what you answer to. I know they are saying stuff about you. The question is, what are you saying about yourself? A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his own. And perhaps out of their belly shall flow the rivers of living water. Your belly is satisfied by the fruit of your mouth. If you have talked Jesus into yourself, there's nobody that can talk the devil into you. If you have talked success and grace and faith and blessing to yourself, there's nobody that can talk causes and failure into you. Sometimes you just have to talk to yourself. You go in front of the mirror and you begin to counsel yourself. You begin to advise yourself. You begin to preach yourself happy. Many of us talk to people that don't like us. Somebody once said, half of the people you talk to, they don't like you. The other one are excited, you are in trouble anyway. So there is half that don't care, and the other one are happy, you are in trouble. There's nobody that, that knows you like yourself. Look at what the Bible says. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. And look at and with the increase of his lips shall he be what? His own lips. His, the increase of his own lips shall he be filled. And look at verse 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it, they that love it, shall eat the fruit thereof. You take the word of God in your mouth. You take the word of the prophecy in your mouth and you begin to speak it. That's why I told you, take that prophecy and confess it daily. Read it every day. Remind yourself the goodness of God, the grace of God, the plan of God, the purpose of God, the assignment of God for you. It doesn't matter how long you have been in this struggle. It doesn't matter how long this problem has persisted. You can break it by the word. Because perhaps the entrance of the world bring it light and give understanding to the simple. Because your word set spiritual machinery into motion to bring to pass those things that you have uttered. When you speak in the name of Jesus, angel stands at attention. When you speak, perhaps you shall decree a thing and it shall be established. God is committed to confirm what we confess by faith. Perhaps it shall be unto you according to your faith. Because as you begin to program yourself with, your, with the word of your mouth, your life begins to adjust to those things which you have said. See, because this thing doesn't happen immediately. Sometimes people think it's not working. You are a sum total today of what you have said yesterday. Your future is determined by your present. Your present is presently determined by your past. Tell somebody, I'm blessed. Tell somebody, I am 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 blessed. Tell somebody, this is my year of vision and fulfillment. This is my year. Of vision and fulfillment. This is my year of vision 
and fulfillment. Rise up on your feet. I'm going to continue this series next week. I just took one part today, putting the word in your mind. I told you last week I'm going to give you exact same way how you are going to do these things. So I've started today telling you, first of all, you, first of all, you take that word of prophecy. Amen? Are you listening to me? And you put it where? In your mouth. Hear yourself speak it. Speak the word of God to yourself. Speak the word of God to yourself in your sleep, in your bed. Speak to yourself. You are not what he said you are. You are who God said you are. And you are only who God said you are, that you believe that you are, that you confess that you are. Do you know what I'm saying? You are only what God said you are, that you believe that you are, that you confess that you are. What God said about you cannot be changed by any man. But it could be unfulfilled. There are many prophecies that God has given to so many people that never happened. Not because God has failed, but they failed to claim it. They failed to speak it. They got tired of saying it. Life situation and circumstance convinced them to stop talking about it. So, so they did. There's nothing more than, the, than what the enemy wants to do to stop you from doing what God has said about you. For you not to fulfill the plan of God for your life, the enemy needs your cooperation. For you to fulfill the plan of God for your life, God needs your cooperation. Don't let your environment control you. Don't let your environment control your utterance. Let your utterance control your environment. That's what the Bible says, let the weak say, I am. Why did you think God said that? You think God wants you to lie? No. God is training you to control your feeling, your environment by your words. So when they said, you can't get the land, I said, we already did. When they say, you have no permit, I said, God has already permitted us. When somebody told me, I saw you dead, I said, go and sleep again. I had a dream, you've been sleeping too much. You died, I'm not the one you saw. You know what I'm saying? I told I'm not the one you saw. You can't see me dead. Do I look dead to you? I took the word of God to control my environment. Somebody say, well, I just want to say the truth. That's not the truth. The word of God is the truth. What you feel is not the truth. That is the lie your body is telling you. That's the lie your brain is telling you. That's the lie your mind is telling you. That's the lie CNN is telling you. The truth, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. The truth is what God says. It's not what you feel. It's not what the doctor says. Is the doctor your creator? Is the doctor your maker? Is the doctor your God? The first step, I told you last time I'm going to start explaining.